Welcome into the show. It is Wednesday morning. I appreciate you joining me today. Um, I downloaded some software uh, that I'll, I should be able to sort out over the weekend and hopefully get this camera back to normal because it has been a real bitch lately. So hopefully I can sort that out over the weekend and have it good to go for Monday, but just uh, suffer through with me for a couple more days this week. I appreciate it. But anyways, welcome in. I'm going to talk quickly. Uh, I, I got to get through this fast. I did a ton of work today and I got a little bit more to do. So um, just bear with me. We're going to talk about the, the big trade in baseball just now. And then obviously we'll continue with the Pac-12 um, predictions with the, the Pac-12 North number four to six today and number 10 or 11 to 15 in the fantasy football running back rankings. So we start with the trade. Trevor Bauer to Cincinnati. Yasiel Puig, who was involved in a major brawl tonight in Cincinnati, uh, or in Pittsburgh, I guess, for Cincinnati. Um, no, no, the game was in Cincinnati. Um, Puig goes to Cleveland. Fran Mill Reyes from the Padres goes to Cleveland. Taylor Trammell. Trammell, I'm not sure how to say it, from Cincinnati. Um, prospect, but an old prospect, goes to San Diego. And, and as I said, Bauer goes to um, Cincinnati. And then Cleveland got some other other pieces as well. But Puig and Reyes were the big ones. We start with Puig. He's had a good year. He's had a real nice bounce back year. Um, but you know, he's always a risk just because of his fiery personality. Some guys don't really respond to that. So I guess, you know, but but you look at Tito Francona in Cleveland, good manager. He's handled big personalities before us. But, I mean, you think about Manny Ramirez and, uh, you know, all those guys in Boston over the years. Papelbon was crazy. Um, you know, so, so I don't, I, I believe if there's a manager who can do it, it's Tito Francona. So I'm not necessarily super concerned about that aspect of it. I thought better than getting Puig was getting Fran Mill Reyes. This is a guy who has 27 homers hitting in one of the biggest parks in the major leagues in San Diego. He's 24. I just I don't quite understand this move from A.J. Preller, uh, the, the Padres GM. It's a very, very odd move. Um, they have Myers in the outfield, and they have a lot of right-handed bats, but... He, I guess he wanted a left-handed bat, but Taylor Trammell has not done much. Uh, and Fran Mel Reyes has hit it was 27 homers this year. And you're just going to ship that guy off for a maybe guy in return. Same age, has done considerably less. Fran Mel Reyes was cranking out homers in one of the biggest parks. And you just ship him off for... Uh, this trade hasn't been fully finalized yet, so I think they're going to get a few more guys. But even still... It's a bizarre move, um, and A.J. Preller better pray that Taylor Trammell is an all-star here within the next three years, or he, he's going to be axed for sure. Um, but obviously, um, Cleveland and Cincinnati were the biggest players here. Trevor Bauer ends up in Cincinnati. Um, Cleveland had wanted to get rid of him. They don't like his personality, um, and so now he ends up in Cincinnati. Uh, they go from one fiery player in Puig now to, to Bauer, who is uh, maybe equally as fiery. And um, But I think, it, I, I think it's a good trade for Cincinnati. I, I don't think that, you know, you have a year and a half of Bauer. They could make a run this year at the wild card, but I doubt it. Uh, it, it would take a miracle. But next year, now you're looking at it, and you, you have a solid team to go out there with Bauer in his... Um, in his final year before he becomes a free agent and have a real shot maybe at the division certainly at the wild card so it's not a bad move from the reds uh especially considering they didn't give up a ton especially um the fact that they have nick sinzel who's really working out in center field i think helped and and allowed them to to feel like they could trade taylor trammell and be okay so that's all i've got an interesting trade oh finally i think cleveland um 
really bolstered their their outfield. They got some right-handed bats that they needed. Fran Mel Reyes is going to be a beast in Cleveland. Um, I, I think it's a terrific trade for them, especially when you consider kind of the personality issues they were having with uh, Trevor Bauer. To get him out of there is probably in, in their best interest. So I think Cincinnati, Cleveland, probably winners here. Um, and then I think San Diego is the big loser, depending on what other pieces they get, if any, in this trade when it's finalized. All right, move on to the Pac-12 North, number six through four. I'm going to go quickly here uh, since these are crap teams. Uh, we have Oregon State at six. I think that's obvious. They are terrible. They're going to be terrible. They're going to continue to be terrible. And um, maybe the worst sports program in, in – um, in college sports they have a good baseball team but failed this year cal at five we all watch the cheese at bowl we know how bad cal's offense is their defense is good um and if their offense can get some production maybe they can be a decent team but uh, i think it would take a miracle to be anywhere above five and a pretty good pac-12 north and finally at four washington state uh the pirate coming back for another year with wazoo uh should be a slight down year um, lost a lot of guys, but he, he's one of those guys that, that always surprises you and is able to reload despite not having, you know, top recruiting classes. He still uh, always seems to be able to get his guys in there and, and, and have good teams. So we'll see. I think four for them, but it, it, it wouldn't shock me if they ended up second or even winning it. So there we go. That is the Pac-12 North. Finally, we move on to uh Fantasy running back rankings. At 15, we have Derek Henry of the Titans. Remember, this is half PPR, so adjust slightly either way. He would obviously be um, adjusted down probably significantly in full PPR. He's not a great pass catcher, but if they commit to giving him the football, um, then then the sky's the limit for Derrick Henry. I mean, he could be a top 10 RB for sure if, if they commit to the running game. Taylor Lewan being out for four games probably uh, is definitely a concern, and, and but but I you know I, I don't know if it would keep me from drafting Derrick Henry uh, just because he was going to be out four games because I can probably make it through four games uh, and get his production back to where it needs to be. So it wouldn't necessarily turn me off. It might, I might. I might take a couple of the guys I said yesterday slightly over him. Maybe Damian Williams, now that I know Lawan's going to be out. Uh, it might affect it slightly, but nothing major. I think I think he'll be fine. At 14, I have Aaron Jones. I think they're going to run the ball more this year. They should have been running the ball all along. He's a great back, um, and I think with Matt LaFleur in there, he understands the value he has at that running back spot. Aaron Jones is very good, and I think they are going to feed him the ball far, far more th than they did under Mike McCarthy. 13, you have Nick Chubb, the Browns. Um, he, uh, yeah, he was great last year. Breakout season, and I expect him to be again this year. You worry about when Kareem Hunt comes back, what will that do to his production? And that's a, that's a legitimate concern. And, and I think I would probably rank him higher if not for that. But sorry, no Richard. Um, but, but I just can't do it considering I, I know that Kareem Hunt's coming back, and I think that will absolutely tear into his his touches especially kind of as we go towards the tail end of the season and they're probably trying to save him up if they are you know in a good spot for the playoffs uh they might try to get kareem hunt some more to get him in shape for a potential playoff run and obviously save nick chubb some uh, some hits uh at, at 12 i have josh jacobs and i know this is a controversial one but i like josh jacobs i think i know john gruden likes to likes to run the football uh, the Raiders are going to be a much better offensive team. Now defenses have to key in on Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams on the outside. Uh, Derek Carr seems to, seems to have some more confidence, so I think they're going to be able to run the ball, and I think they're going to do it well. And not only that, Josh Jacobs can catch the ball. You have Jalen Richard, who will certainly catch a few balls as well, but I think Josh Jacobs, I know he's going to be the bell cow, and I think that even more than that, he, he's really going to um, uh, he, he's going to catch more passes than I think people think he is right now. Finally, at eleven, Dalvin Cook. Uh, I think he's overrated, but I keep coming back to just his sheer talent 
and the fact that, that the Vikings want to run the football. They want to run the football. He's got loads of talent. You worry about his injuries, obviously, but with the talent he has, I'd be willing to take a chance on a, a late second round pick on Dalvin Cook uh, because, again, the talent is there. You know he's going to catch passes. Uh, you know he's, he's probably going to be their goal line back. So Dalvin Cook at 11. There you have it. That is the show for today. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when we are live every morning at 6 a.m. Thank you for watching. Uh, check back the rest of this week and check back definitely Thursday afternoon because my Democratic debate recap will be dropping. So do that and uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow.